All right, guys, this video is going to allow us to connect up our Studio 5000 software to Factor.io. Factor.io is an amazing simulation software uh, that allows us to, you know, hit push buttons, hit selector switches, put some photoelectric sensors in there, have some conveyors, uh, and have a simulation of our PLC program. So our PLC program gets uh, tied in with this simulation software, and then you can see everything happening in real time in this virtual environment. So let's go through all the steps in order to make that work. Let me get myself out of the way. And you'll see the here that I'm on the Factor.io uh, website. I'll put this link in the comment section below. Uh, but this says setting up the Logix 5000 PLC. So first thing it says um, is that we're going to connect the PLC to the network. So uh, if you're in my classroom, you have your Allen Bradley Compact Logix. You're going to connect it up to the Ethernet cable. Um, and we're going to assign an IP address uh, to the PLC. Uh, so that should have already been done on your specific PLC. So your specific PLC will, will already have a Lamacoid or a sticker that says that specific IP for uh, IP address for that PLC. So we, you'll see that at your station you have specific IPs for any uh, touch screens like HMIs or PLCs or variable frequency drives that are in front of you. But if you needed to do that, you would set up your, uh, your IP address on the, um, the actual PLC. Uh, prior to doing that, I would want to go down here to uh, my network. So I would go to Open Network and Internet Settings. Then I would go to my, uh, my Ethernet here. So I can go to, um, I would probably go to the Change Adapter Options. And then you can see that I have my Ethernet connection here. I right click on this and go to properties and we've done this in a previous video i'm just showing you uh, the, the what we've done with the internet protocol version 4 tcp ip version 4. so double click on that guy and you'll see that normally it says obtain an ip address automatically but we're going to use a static ip so we're going to use 192.168.1.123 matching with the previous videos Again, if you're in the classroom, then that IP address might be different than this video. Uh, the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. You see where I clicked on that, it just came in. So we're going to hit OK. So we're using a static IP address for our computer. And then that the first three numbers, 192.168.1, will match with the address that we use for the PLC. OK, so everything's good there. OK, so let's minimize that. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start uh, RS links. So first step is always to open up RS links. Let's see if we can put these side by side here. Okay, so we're going to go to configure drivers. So you'll see that I already have an Ethernet connection up and running. Uh, so and that connects up to my PLC 192.168.1.10. You can see that those first three sets of numbers are identical to what we just did with uh, our Ethernet connection for the computer. Uh, but if you're doing this for the first time, you're going to communications, you're going to configure drivers. You'll see here that you're going to do Ethernet IP driver. So you're clicking here, doing an Ethernet IP driver. You'll hit add new. Uh, it'll give it a name uh, and then you can hit OK. OK, once that's done, then you should have this up and running. OK. So you should be able to see the, um, like if this is, <clears throat> uh, if we go back to our uh, RS Logix, then, so we'll, we'll close this up, go back to RS Logix, and then you can see within there that you have your actual PLC, 192.168.1.10. Here they have their PLC, 192.168.1.13. Okay, so hopefully everything's set up in that you have spe specified uh, a static IP for your Ethernet, for your computer, and you've got uh, now a IP for the actual PLC. Okay, excellent. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect Factor IO to the PLC. So let's open up our Factor IO now. Let me just move this over here. Okay, and so it says um, it says click on File and Driver Configuration. So if we get out of here. So let's go back to the home. This, once you open up Factor IO, this is going to be the, um, the, the image that comes up, but it does not have file and driver configuration there. So what they failed to mention is you have to open up a scene. So within the scenes, you can choose whichever scene you want. I'm going to open up a specific scene that I've already set up for Compact Logics, 
And if you're in my classroom, uh, then you're most likely going to open up tutorial scene number one, Compact Logics. Okay, so you can see that that's already set up and it's got a specific environment here where it has um, a, a, con a control panel and it's got a conveyor and we got a couple of sensors that are on the conveyor belt there. Okay, so it's here that you're gonna go to file and then you're gonna go to drivers and then you're gonna go to configuration. Okay, uh, you're going to choose the Allen Bradley Logix 5000 there. Okay, if that's not coming up there, then you would come here and click here and click on Allen Bradley Logix 5000. Again, I'm not clicking on this because it might wipe out what I've already uh, done and I've already got everything set up. So you're clicking on Allen Bradley Logix 5000. Once you've done that, then you're gonna to go to configuration Okay, and then you're gonna put in the specific IP address for your PLC. So again, if you're in the classroom, then that IP address is on the sticker or the Lamicoid at your station, or it's physically on the PLC trainer that you're working on. So at home, my IP address for my PLC is 192.168.1.10, matching with the previous videos that we did. Okay, so next thing we can do, we can hit back or we can hit escape. Okay, and then I'm gonna disconnect here. So then you should be able to hit connect and then you'll see a green check mark here. Now, if you don't see the green check mark right away, um, then don't worry, we're, gonna, we're going to upload a program to the PLC with these specific Boolean inputs and then you should be able to, to connect up. Mine worked right away in that I was able to connect to it right away after um, setting up my, uh, my RS links there. Okay, so um, everything's set up there. Next thing is we need to create tags in our Studio 5000. So let's open up our Studio 5000 now. Okay, let me put this here and this here. Okay, so next thing you need to do uh, is you need to be able to go to View and go to View Controller Organizer. So don't go to the Logical Organizer, go to the Controller uh, Organizer. Is that what we want to do? View. Oh, see, it moved me over to logical. Let's go to controller organizer. Okay, then I've got everything uh, here for my PLC and I want to go to controller tags. Okay, once I go to controller tags, uh, your tags will most likely be empty uh, and we need to drop in our Boolean addresses here. So you'll see with the factor IO is that um, it's different than the, the Siemens uh, environment. With the Siemens TIA portal, we had to offset the physical inputs by like 40. So we just move the physical inputs, uh, you know, from input zero up to input 40, um, so that the physical inputs were not superseding the inputs within factor IO. Um, for the Allen Bradley environment, um, they just want you to create these tags. We're gonna do Boolean in zero. And we're going to do 16 bits here. So we're going to do 0 through 15. And we're going to do Boolean ins and we're going to do Boolean outs as well. So within the Allen Bradley environment, they want us to create these tags. And those tags, which you'll see here, are identical to those that are being used in Factor IO. And then it should be able to talk between the two. Okay. So we're doing that here within. Um, the Allen Bradley environment. So you're going again to view, you're going to controller organizer, right? So don't be in the logical organizer, go to the controller organizer, go to controller tags, and then you can see we have monitor, monitor tags, and then beside that we have edit tags. Okay, now your, um, your Boolean inputs here will obviously not be here. These are the blank slate, uh, but you're going to type in your first one, bool, underscore in underscore zero. You're gonna make the data type obviously to a Boolean input. Uh, and then instead of typing this in, then you're going to click on the side here and you're gonna copy that tag. So don't copy just the name, copy the entire tag, then paste it in below and then it should increment up by one. Okay, then you're copying that tag, pasting it in, copying it in, pasting it in. If you're a teacher, I would suggest uh, having this already set up for your students. So I already have a base, like a base PLC program that the students open up 
and they don't have to mess around doing all these things. My students would not have the patience to, uh, to set all this up. Another thing you could do is you could have uh, an Excel spreadsheet and you could import that Excel spreadsheet into your tags here. Okay, so uh, we need to have the Boolean ins, so zero through 15. Then you'll see that in factor IO, we also have the Boolean outs, zero through 15. So you can add those guys in simply by putting in Boolean out, making a Boolean, and then copying the entire tag and then pasting it below and it should increment again. Then I would suggest putting these in as well, just so everything works out for you. So within this environment, it has floats zero through three. So float in zero to float in three. So add those guys in. Okay, it looks, I don't have a float in four, right? So I can delete that guy. Okay, and then we've got uh, float out zero through float out three. So you can add those guys in as well. If you're making like a base PLC program that you're gonna use time and time again. Okay, then we also have integer in zero through three. So you can see those guys here. And then we have integer out zero through three as well. Okay, not likely they're gonna make use of um, all of those floats, maybe just a couple of those guys or an integer if you're doing like a counter or something like that. Um, but you might as well throw that in just so everything uh, is copacetic between the two programs there. Okay, once everything's there, then let's go back to the instructions here. So it says you've, uh, if you've done everything for the Boolean inputs through Boolean outputs. I've suggested to do the floats and the integers as well, if that's within the environment of factory uh, IO. And then you're going to download it. Uh, so, da so to download, we're going to go to communications, who active. Okay, we should see our uh, PLC up here. So 119.168.1.10. Okay, and we're going to click on download. Okay, click on download again. Excellent. So two things you should see. It should say complete, zero errors, and zero warnings. Uh, so we'll hit yes to change the controller back to remote run. Beautiful. Okay, so now let's go back to factor IO. Uh, and you should see that all of these guys have now gone uh, green. Sometimes it does this, where it does uh, the red. So I'm going to disconnect, and I'm going to connect up again. Excellent. Then they all go green. Uh, this is actually a little bit frustrating in that uh, it seems that every time, and if you guys have an answer for this, every time that I download my PLC program to the uh, to my Compact Logics PLC, it kicks me out of the Factory IO environment. I don't know whether I need to update the factor IO software or anything like that, but I do find that a little bit annoying in that I have to go back every time and disconnect and reconnect. Okay, so if you have the angry red there, then just disconnect, reconnect, and you should be good to go. At this point, you should see uh, a green check mark that's here. Okay, now at this point, I would also uh, save this program. So I would go to File, Save As and then save it as a specific you know, program that you can use later on. So your base PLC program for factor IO, okay? Or call it whatever you wish. Okay, so you're gonna save that. Next thing you're gonna go is we're gonna go to the main program. Come on. Uh, then we're gonna, so single click on main program, then double click on main routine. Okay, and you'll see here that I've got uh, Boolean input number two, and I've got, um, looks like Boolean input number three. This is not right. So let's see, let's see what we need to do. Uh, why did I pick Boolean input number two? So if you're wondering why I use these guys, um, then you can see that I have Boolean input number two, and that's corresponding to a reset push button. Strange, okay, so let's go, um, let's do some changes here. So let's quickly go offline here. Let's get rid of this guy and I'll show you how to just drop in some stuff. So we've seen this in the previous videos, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to uh, grab and examine on, drop that guy in, and then we just need to have an output energize. We'll drop that guy in once we see green. Excellent. Let's hit control so we can make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make use of the start push button Boolean input number one. Now everything's set up within my tags there. So can I use, yes, I can use Boolean input number one. Excellent. And I'm gonna have that turn on uh, the roller conveyor. So I need Boolean output number six. Okay, so I'm coming here. I have all my inputs, scrolling down to my outputs. 
and I need Boolean output number six. Okay, what you can do as well is uh, once you have a specific scene that you have open, uh, like for Boolean open number six, you can see here that that's my roller conveyor. So you can put that in your description there so it will come up as well. Okay, so Boolean open number six, excellent. So everything's set up. Uh, I'm now going to just quickly download that. So now we've got a simple program that has a start push button turning on the conveyor. See that? See how it kicks me out? Super frustrating. If you guys have an answer for fixing that, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Um, and we have to disconnect, reconnect, then we get green lights. Excellent. Okay, so now let's go here. So you see this arrow. That'll bring us back to the simulation environment. Um, and I now want to play. So I'm just going to click on here and I'm just going to move the scene over a touch. We'll move in. And now I'm going to hit play. Okay, so once I'm up and running, uh, then you can see here I've got um, a blocker that just came up. So let me go to view. Uh, let me see the um, dock all the tags. And the stop blade is forced. Okay, so we'll get rid of that guy. Okay, so that's good. Let's go view and clear the dock tags. Excellent. So now I'm up and running. Uh, if we go again, if we go back to the drivers, we want to make sure that we have green lights here and a green check mark. Excellent. And now if I hit this push button, right, the start push button should enable this Boolean input number one, and we should see Boolean output number six turn on, and we should see the conveyor up and running. Let's see if it works. Oh, very nice. Excellent. Okay, once I left, this is a two-hour control. So if I let go of the push button, then the conveyor should come to a stop there. Beautiful. So you can see here, this is such a cool environment. You've seen this on the previous videos. And it has um, like all kinds of uh, physics within there as well. Not that you're going to be tossing stuff off the conveyor belt. Uh, but it does have some gaming uh, physics in there and it's just such a phenomenal environment. So now you can see I have my PLC program that corresponds to my, my start push button and that now turns on my conveyor. Excellent. So I hope that uh, everything has worked out for you, that you've been able to have your Studio 5000 now talking to your factor IO and you can see that uh, once we have this up and running, now we have the capability of making whatever scene we want and now having our PLC program um, controlling this environment. If you have a, a fairly decent sized monitor, you can then snap this in on one side, snap your PLC program on the other side, uh, and then you have lots of room to be able to view your PLC program and the learning environment as well. All right, guys, hopefully everything works out. Um, I'll see you guys on the next video. We're gonna start make, to make use of uh, the Factor I, I O environment with the subsequent uh, videos that I'm going to do on the Compact Logics in Studio 5000. All right, guys, thanks very much. We'll see you in the next video.